I've now switched to another heart so as to show you in rather more detail the structure of the oval fossa. This heart in fact has an undivided anterior wall of the appendage and if I reflect that you can see much more nicely than the, in the previous heart the way that the pectinate muscles extend all the way around the atrioventricular junction reaching down to the vestibule of the tricuspid valve. What we can also see in this heart is how the mouth of the inferior cable vein looks directly into the oval fossa. And as I turn the heart so that you can see the posterior surface of the right atrium, you can very nicely see how the oval fossa truly is a depression on its posterior wall with the superior cable vein above it, the inferior cable vein looking directly into it, and then the mouth of the coronary sinus inferior to the fossa itself. In this particular specimen, however, I have dissected the region between the attachment of the superior cable vein to the right atrium and the right pulmonary veins to the left atrium. And having dissected the posterior atrioventricular groove, you can see this very deep groove that interposes between the walls of the right atrium and the left atrium. Oftentimes, this area in the roof of the oval fossa is described as the septum secundum, but having dissected into the superior intraatrial groove, you can see how it is no more than a deep groove between the atrial walls. This, of course, is of importance for the surgeon because the surgeon can make use of this deep groove so as to gain access to the roof of the left atrium. And this is the groove that is known as Sondergaard's groove or Waterston's groove, the superior interatrial groove. It should not be called the septum secundum. In fact, the true atrial septum is the floor of the oval fossa. In this particular instance, the floor of the oval fossa is separate from the rims so that we have propatency of the oval foramen. I can show you that by opening up to, so that you can see the left side. And then if I pass a probe up through the mouth of the inferior cable vein, you will see how the probe passes between the flap valve that I'm lifting away by my probe, the enfolded rims of the oval fossa, the enfolded atrial walls, and this is probe patency of the oval foramen. We also have another true septal area, which is this antero-inferior part. That becomes confluent with another important area, the triangle of cock, but I'll show you that in yet another specimen.